Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about facts and its types. So basically what is facts? So facts it stands for flexible alternating current transmission system. This is the symbol of facts. Now how can we define the facts? So facts can be defined by many authorities such as IEEE. IEEE defined fact, facts as a power electronic based system. So it's basically a power electronic based system and other static equipment that provide control of one or more AC transmission system parameter to enhance controllability and increase power transfer capability. So, so facts is basically a power electronic based system right and it is providing the control of one or more ac transmission system parameter so either it is controlling the system reactance or it is controlling the load angle or it is controlling the voltage and why it is controlling to enhance controllability and ultimately to increase the power transfer capability this definition is as per IEEE. Now, what Siemens says about the facts. So, facts increase the reliability of AC grid and reduce power delivery cost. They improve transmission quality and efficiency of power transmission by supplying inductive or reactive power to the grid. So, as per the Siemens, the facts is increasing reliability of AC grid means the AC grid will be more reliable in terms of fault and reduce power delivery cost. So the transmission losses will also reduce as. Now they improve transmission quality. So the, what they are improving by using facts is the power quality and the efficiency of power transmission. So they are ultimately reducing the transmission losses and for doing all this they are supplying what inductive or reactive power to the grid. Now facts controller. A facts controllers are several power electronic based system right and is used for controlling of AC power transmission as well as distribution now any device can be a fax device but the condition is that it must have following features the very first one is ability for frequent variation in output the second one is a smooth adjustment of output and third one is rapid dynamic response if any of devices has one or more features like about three then it can be a fact devices now what are the benefits of using facts devices that we will be discussing next now if we are using the facts controller then the system must improve so what improvement can be seen by using the facts controller the very first one improved power transmission capability so now why when we are using the facts devices at, at that time the power transmission capability is improving how now suppose we want to transmit more power than what the system was originally designed for say for example a transmission line is designed for 300 megawatt now as the load increases we want to transmit more power on that transmission line what we will do we will build a new transmission line but this can becomes more expensive because the cost of right of way so what we will going to do we will going to provide an alternative solution instead of constructing 
instead of building a new transmission line through flex controller now the second benefit of using flex controller is improvement in availability of power now it is it has been find through the throughout the time that number of blackouts have been caused by the lack of proper reactive power management has been reduced using the flex devices so the blackouts are such are blackouts are reducing with with the help of flex devices because the flex devices are able to handle more efficiently the reactive power demand and they are more efficiently handle the reactive power management the third one is improvement in stability now the flex technology can be used to effectively improve steady state and transient stability improvement in power quality the flex devices can be used to effectively improve uh, the flex devices on the distribution side can be designed to improve power quality the fifth benefit is optimal power system operation by reduction in losses by using the flex devices we can reduce the losses in the transmission line and then and the optimal power system operation can be possible improved in the voltage profiles uh, by using the flex controller the voltage profile of the system can be improved and it also counter the ssr which is sub synchronous resonance is one of the problem of using series capacitor in the transmission line now what are the parameters that are controllable through the flex devices now uh, in the figure one you can see that there is a system uh, having the two buses v uh, one and the second uh, on the first bus there is a generator is connected on the bus one uh, uh, there is a voltage v1 angle delta one which is uh, it is connected to the bus two through an reactance of jx the voltage at bus two is v2 angle delta two and uh, we can find that the by neglecting the resistance the power level of power level at the two buses can be the active power at the buses can be equal to v1 v2 sine of delta divided by x where delta is nothing but the load angle and the x is the reactance of the transmission line the reactive power at bus 1 which is injected into the bus 1 is v1 square by x minus v1 v2 cos of delta by x and the reactive power at bus 2 is v2 square upon x minus v1 v2 cos of delta by x now by observing these three expression first second and third we can see that v the voltage x the reactance or delta the load angle can be controlled to control the active power or the reactive power of the system now what we are doing is we are using the flex controller and controlling these three parameters how now first we can increase or decrease the value of x what is this this is the system reactance and by doing this we can control the active power as we already seen in the in the first expression that p1 is equal to p2 is equal to v1 v2 sine of delta divided by x so by the decreasing the value of x the power active power can be increased and by increasing the value of x the active power can be decreased second one control of phase angle that is delta which control the current flow and hence the active power flow if we, if phase angle is not large so by the controlling the control angle delta we can control the active power flow the third one is inject a voltage in series with the line and in quadrature to the current 
this can increase or decrease the magnitude of line current and controlled active power so by injecting a voltage in series with the transmission line we can control the active power flow the fourth one inject a voltage in series with the line with any phase angle with respect to driving voltage so here the voltage v is v1 delta 1 and we are injecting a voltage something v with any phase angle and this can control the magnitude and the phase angle of the line current this provides a powerful mean for the control of active and reactive power by doing this we can control the active power and or reactive power the fifth one inject a voltage in phase with the sending or receiving end voltage to alter the magnitude of terminal voltage so the terminal voltage v2 can be changed if we inject a voltage in phase with the sending or receiving end voltage a combination of one or more above so we can this five method can be used in combination to control this to control the active and the reactive power now next is types of facts controller basically there are the four types of facts controller the shunt controller the series controller combined series series controller and combined series shunt controller so we'll have a look over this that the shunt controller here is the diagram of the shunt controller this is basically block diagram uh, basic diagram of shunt controller how the shunt controller look like now the shunt controller basically what they are doing is the shunt controller inject current into system at the point of connection so wherever the shunt con uh, that shunt controller is connected it will inject a current into the system now what they are maybe it may be of variable impedance such like svc or variable source means variable source voltage so it can be changing the value of impedance or it is changing the value of voltage or a combination of these two now if the current if the current that is injecting at the point of coupling is in phase quadrature with the bus voltage the shunt controller only supplies or consumes variable reactive power right so if the current that we are injecting at the current that we are injecting i into the line is in the phase quadrature means a 90 phase out of phase with the bus voltage then the shunt controller will supplies or consume variable reactive power what are the examples of the shunt controller like statcom ssg svc and pcdb and many more so what is statcom is a static compensator what is ssg it is static synchronous generator what is svc it is a static war compensator and what is pcdb it is a thyristor control dynamic brake there are many more such like tcr thyristor control reactor SMEA super superconducting magnetic storage energy storage and the, here in the figure you can see the schematic arrangement it is a symbol for shunt controller now next one is the series controller with the symbol which is where you can find the fax devices is connected in series with the transmission line now the series controller injects voltage in series with the line right so uh, a series controller is injecting a voltage in series with the line when the voltage injected is in the quadrature with the line current the series controller only supplies and consumes reactive power in the shunt controller we are injecting the current in the quadrature with the voltage and in the series controller we are injecting a voltage in quadrature with the line current and in both the cases the both the controller are only supplying or consuming reactive power the examples of series controller are triple sc tcsc and tcsr so triple sc is static synchronous 
series compensator tcs is thigh screw control series capacitor and tcsr is thigh screw control series reactor now next we are using the combination the combined series series controller so here we are combining a two series controller in this diagram basically this is the schematic uh, symbol diagram in which we can see that the two series uh, two flex controller are connected in series but multiple transmission line can be controlled in this way so in a series uh, in this uh, combined series series controller a multi line transmission system is controlled in a coordinated manner by connecting flex controller in each line right now a unified controller in which series controller provide independent series reactive power compensation for each line and also transfer real power so it is basically it can be a basically a unified controller in which there there will be a flex controller in each transmission line each face of the transmission line and where uh, at, at that place it will control the individual phase of the transmission lines and the last one uh, is the combined series shunt controller in which we can see that in the symbol itself it is saying that a shunt controller is there which is injecting the current and a series controller is there which is injecting a voltage so it is basically a combination of series and shunt controller coordinated together so both they both work in coordinated manner in order to control the parameters of transmission line the series controller injects a voltage in series with the line voltage and the shunt controller injects current into system at the point of interconnection in the example of combined series shunt controller are upfc which is basically unified power flow controller and the t TCPST which is thyristor controlled phase shifting transformer thank you